This and all talks at the 2020 JavaScript for WordPress conference are brought to you in part by our sponsors Frontity and GoDaddy Pro. Frontity is the easiest way to create performant websites using WordPress and React. It connects both seamlessly so you can focus on building your site instead of all the tooling and configuration. Open source and free to use. GoDaddy Pro Hosting offers a robust suite of free tools to web developers and designers to help them save time managing all their clients and sites. Your free membership also includes advanced 24-7 technical support. Okay, so today we're going to discuss taking a static-first approach to WordPress, whether you have an existing WordPress site or you are building a new site. Um, so first, just a bit about myself. So my name is Miriam Schwab. <laughs> life is life. Uh, I'm the CEO of Stratic, as Zach mentioned. Uh, but prior to founding Stratic, I founded a web development development agency uh, focusing on WordPress called Luminao. Um, so I've been in the world of WordPress 14 years or more. And I'm a five-time WordCamp organizer. And I've spoken at quite a lot of WordCamps and conferences in our field in Israel and outside of Israel, a few times at WordCamp Europe, in the US, London, et cetera. And more recently, a lot of online <laughs> speaking. I'm a mom, as you may have seen from my kid who came in. <laughs> and um, if you have any questions or anything, you can tweet me, or of course you can chat here. Um, like. Like I said, I can see your chat. Um, just before we start, we're hiring a React developer. I feel like this is a good forum to say that. Um, and again, if you are relevant or you know someone relevant, please um, reach out to me. That would be great. OK, here we go. So why static WordPress? That kind of seems like a, an oxymoron, ox, oxymoron type of state, statement. Um, both of those have advantages. So first of all, static has the following advantages. Uh, a static website is one where the architecture does not involve an underlying server or a processing server. Um, and because it's basically just a collection of static files and doesn't have that dynamic component to it, the, these types of sites tend to be very fast. They scale really quickly. Um, they're in many ways more secure. Uh, by having a site that's just a collection of static files, you reduce uh, the attack surface that you would normally have in a WordPress site by over 99.99%, let's say. And um, it's more modern, which is ironic, because if any of you have been in the world of uh, web building as long as I have, we were building static sites a long time ago. So it's like we've come full circle, but the static approach today is much more modern, obviously. And um, static also is known by a bunch of other terms. They're not all exactly the same, but they're generally talking about the same type of website, headless, jam stack, um, and decoupled. And basically what it means is you've got a front end that's separated or disconnected in some way from uh, some kind of backend CMS um, system of some kind that generates the, the content. WordPress, this is a JavaScript for WordPress conference. And I don't know about you, but we do love WordPress. So what do we love about it? Let's remind ourselves. Uh, first of all, it's open source software. And that is a huge selling point. No um, vendor lock-in, no proprietary software issues where you're stuck with the number of developers who built your site, right? Like they used to be. Um, it's familiar. It's been around, uh, was it a 16th anniversary or 17th anniversary now? I can't remember, but that's a lot of years and a lot of websites. Uh, Yoast just um, posted that WordPress grew another 1.7%, which is huge. So it's still growing. And it's because people are familiar with it and are comfortable editing content and building websites in it. Um, it has a very uh, strong and stable ecosystem of people like all of us who continue to contribute and develop this world of WordPress, whether 
as contributors to core, plugin developers, or suppliers, um, website builders, etc. We're all part of this ecosystem that's very strong and it's kind of like a rising tide that raises all ships. And of course the tooling, which is like the plugins um, and themes and basically any company that wants, uh, that it has a web tool and they're trying to get more website users to use their tool, they'll create a WordPress plugin. And a really good example of that is Google. Google's huge and they have their site kit plugin um, and AMP, which an AMP plugin, and they have a team dedicated to WordPress. So uh, people you know, recognize that WordPress has such a huge percentage of the internet, it's worth it to be there. Um, so what's the difference between a static architecture and, a, and your standard WordPress architecture? So this is, let's say, a static site. This is my browser. I say, show me the website. And then it shows me, it delivers a page essentially, right? Uh, this is a dynamic server, a LAMP type of server like WordPress runs on. Show me the, the site and then processes, PHP, queries, database, generates the page on the fly and then delivers it to the visitor. So as you can see, this is a more cumbersome resource intensive process. Uh, one of the big components of WordPress or big projects that's enabled WordPress to come more into this world of static, headless, jump stack, whatever, is the REST API. Um, hopefully we'll see it developed further and there's a lot of interesting projects that are built around it. And then of course there are static publishing solutions like Stratic that uh, help users publish their WordPress website as static without having to build out their own platform. These three, like us, are end to end platforms. And then there are a number of plugins, including WP2 Static, which is continuously developed. Um, so some people will use that and install it on their own server environment or environments to get that set up. And other people will use these types of services for like a one click delivery. OK, so if a static website doesn't have a database, um, how can it be static? Right, that seems to be a conflict that might be irreconcilable. Right, no database. And what are some examples of database-driven functionality that are very common? Okay, forms, right, form plugin. There are so many form plugins that it, I think, indicates the demand for that type of functionality in a WordPress site. So you've got Gravity Forms, Contact Form 7, Ninja Forms. Um, so many more that I can't even remember their names. And of course, now Elementor has their own forms. Uh, comments are the database driven type of functional functionality. Um, when you submit a comment on a WordPress site, it's um, processed through the database, right, and stored there. And when the page is generated, those comments are also the related comments appear. Search. Right, uh, WordPress has out of the box search. You can add a search form to your WordPress site and then search your WordPress content. And that, of course, is also querying the database to get those results. E commerce is very database intensive, um, particularly if we're talking about e commerce based on something like WooCommerce. Um, membership types of sites where you have a login in order to access particular content or whatever, forums. Um, Ajax get requests, so there's different types of functionality, like if you have a list of posts and you have like load more, sometimes that's, um, and then, you know, they appear on the same page, that's sometimes a get request. Infinite scrolling, um, which is basically the same thing. Redirections, re redirections obviously can be managed through the HT access, but um, to make that easier, there's a lot of very useful WordPress plugins that manage redirections for users and that accesses the database in order to do that. Um, Multi-language plugins, even though they're generating content, there can be some, and like it's output, right? Uh, there can be functionality there that's database dependent. Uh, password protected pages, which is also kind of like similar to member memberships um, and scheduled posts, WordPress 
functionality, basic functionality, where you can choose to have a post published at a future date. Also depends on the database. Um, and then this is just, you know, uh, if you have a site where the post date says something like uh, two days ago, as opposed to whatever date it was two days ago. <laughs> Time is very interesting these days. Uh, July 7th, then that also is, um, can cause a problem on a static site. So how, how can we bring these two worlds together? So there's two, a two prong type of approach that you can take. So first of all, you can choose client side JavaScript based solutions for this, these types of dynamic functionality um, from the start or even later on. So I'm just going to use a baking metaphor to show you how I feel about this. So I am going to bake a chocolate cake. And I bake this chocolate cake and it's dairy. It has a cup of milk in it and it has white flour. Uh, but now I'm having someone over who can't eat dairy and someone else prefers whole wheat flour or partial whole wheat flour. I bake that cake again, basically it looks exactly the same. Um, it tastes very similar. It didn't demand any more effort on my part when I was baking the cake. Instead of using a cup of milk, I used a cup of soy milk or almond milk, and now it's dairy free. And instead of using white flour, I used half whole wheat flour. And the results taste the same. The, my end user, my guest, won't necessarily taste something different. Um, but this one is healthier, and uh, I didn't really have to work harder to do that. So that's what I'm trying to get across here about using third party which is that I'm still hearing myself like in a delay. So if you're having any issues hearing me, please let me know. Um, so basically what I, um, I'm trying to get across is that when you're building a new site, if you choose to, let's say, use a third party form solution like HubSpot, instead of a WordPress form plugin, it doesn't demand much more or any more, you know, effort from you. And then in the end, you have a static ready site. And lucky for all of us, we live in an increasingly client side world. So a lot of functionality or features that we used to add to our site that heavily depended on um, server side uh, resources now um, use client side resources. Um, so, you know, we're in a really good position to more easily make our WordPress site static ready. So these are just some examples of these types of services that are third-party JavaScript based. We stick them in our sites or with HubSpot, there's forms and um, you're good to go. It doesn't matter if your site's architecture is static or your classic WordPress architecture, it will work fine. So I'm gonna give you some examples of ways to replace uh, functionality that's quite common. So forms, as I mentioned, is very common. So there's an approach called form endpoints which is very interesting because it's um, very representative of this uh, trend towards the static website. Um, the form endpoint replaces your need for server-side resources by making that endpoint the resource that processes a form submission for you. So here are just some examples. If you search for form endpoints, you'll find a lot of them. Um, some have advantages that others don't and vice versa. It's you know, it's a, a field that's been around for a few years. I started researching the form endpoint um, options out there, I don't know, like three or four years ago, even probably three years ago. And it hasn't developed that much. Uh, I wonder if it's ahead of the trend of static websites, but um, there's definitely some of them that are continuously developing their feature set and are getting better and better. And basically the way that they work is you could build your form with any, form builder, like even a WordPress form plugin. And then what you do is you replace the form action, which is just like a snippet of code with their form action. And at, from that point on, when someone clicks the submit form, they start processing your form submissions for you. So 
that's an interesting, you know, uh, form solution. And I'd be interested to see if it starts to gain more adoption because it really does allow you to build your sites however you want. Your, forms which uh you basically embed in your site in some way and when people fill it out it takes that form submission and sends it to that third party and doesn't process it through your website in my opinion in any case that's probably better practice if you are generating leads through your website with forms you shouldn't be using wordpress as your crm in general my point of view is use wordpress for what it's great for which is content management right um, it's not great as a CRM. So it's generally more ideal for you to be using a form system that anyways funnels your leads um, and people are trying to contact you into a third party CRM service that does the CRM side really well because that, that's what it's meant for. So there's a lot of other options besides HubSpot. Obviously for CRM, one you know, form solution, Google Forms, we all know, not gorgeous, but um, comments are another very, very common type of database driven functionality on WordPress sites, obviously, although what we're seeing is that less and less people are using um, comments on their blog posts. They're allowing the conversation to take place on Twitter, and other social networks and just removing the whole conversation from their their site that's for some active sites and then a lot of sites don't get that many comments anyways so it kind of looks lonely when you have comments and you don't like comments available but no actual comments <laughs> submitted so that's another reason why people may remove uh, comments and then of course there's other reasons like um if they're writing something that's controversial they just you know or they, they're getting spammed or whatever so but if you do want comments on your site and it is a static website there are some options out there there's facebook comments but that means that the commenter have a facebook account discuss which is okay and has a free version um but it also has some issues hi vortok which we're actually testing now commento and there's a bunch of others so there are that's also this is also kind of a growing field related to static websites of third party comment management and in a way this also makes sense if a site is getting a lot of commenting and wants to really generate a lot of conversation maybe use a service that's expertise is comments right even though i have to say i do think wordpress comments are it's a very good system it was developed over a lot of time and with a lot of usage and it's got a lot of benefits but um, so do these other uh, commenting solutions. Um, with search also, you have options that you could implement instead of the WordPress search and the WordPress search isn't that great anyways. It's not a high quality search product. It's just, you search for a word and hear stuff with that word in it. There's not really um, a relevant weighting or anything like that. Um, so Algolia is a commercial product they do, I think they have a free tier and even their lower paid tier is, is really inexpensive. And if you care about the search on your site, Algolia is a really good product because their search results are really high quality. And, and these are some other um, search solutions that you can implement that are more complicated to implement, but are available. And then of course, if you have search on your site, just because someone stuck it there at some point, uh, but nobody's using it, then you could always just remove it also. And then your site is static compatible without replacing it for something. And we've seen a lot of that websites that have searched just because someone put it there at some point, but it doesn't need. Um, E-commerce is interesting because I mentioned WooCommerce, which is di very dynamic and very heavily dependent on a database. But there's a lot of um, development also in the headless e-commerce field. And uh, some of these integrate really, really fantastically with a WordPress site and even have the added advantage of allowing you to have a WordPress managed content site with a fast e-commerce site. WooCommerce uh, websites often suffer from speed issues. 
Um, so potentially using one of these types of solutions allows you to uh, run a WordPress website for managing your content in the way that you're comfortable and with the flexibility that you, you or your client or your team may like. With the speed of a headless or static WordPress site, and they, these types of e-commerce solutions, which are often faster. So that's an interesting trend as well. Um, what we did at Stratic was we decided to make order of all of this because um, you know these questions were coming up. What do I do about comments? What do I do about this? What do I do about that? And so you can go to our site to this URL. And we have a static tools directory there with a filter. Um, and you can search by whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish with uh, e-commerce. Uh, like there's a lot of categories there, forms obviously in search and all this. Um, and you know, you can find a solution that can work on a static site. And these have all basically been tested by us. Uh, I think they've all been tested by us. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think about this um, tools directory. And also, if you know of tools that run, that can be implemented on a WordPress site and well, on, we also would love to hear. We try to keep our eyes and ears open um, for new tools or, or for the development of existing tools and keep this updated. But you know, we can't see the whole internet. So you know of something we don't know? Please let us know. Okay, so um, back to the how. So I said that there's, there's a two pronged approach. Um, and the first one was from the start, consider when you need dynamic functionality on your WordPress site, ways that you could potentially implement it without depending on the WordPress database. And um, as uh, I hope I showed you, there's a lot of tools available. For basic functionality, like of course um, Google Analytics, Hotjar, Jar, and HubSpot, and things like that, and also for form. Thank you, um, Deontay, for your feedback about the directory. I'm glad that you find it useful. Um, that's the point. We're hoping that people find it useful, and hopefully, like expanding people's knowledge about what's out there uh, to support static websites, because there's a lot, and it's we're in a good time for this. The web is definitely sh shifting, and the shift is also good for the WordPress industry. Uh, a lot of these tools are built for like the static site generator realm, you know, like Gatsby and Jekyll, but we can use them as well and use them very well. Um, okay, so that was the first prong. And the second prong is potentially or theoretically to use a platform that supports dynamic functionality on static, mind blown. So uh, what we are, are, have, are doing a Stratic and continue to do a Stratic is we identify dynamic functionality that's very common. And instead of our users having to go and implement a search solution, for example, like Algolia or the other ones I mentioned, which isn't necessarily the most complicated thing, but not a lot of people won't feel comfortable in it. And, and it is, there is a level of complexity to it. So on Stratic, for example, if you publish your site and you have search on it, we will automatically generate an Algolia index for the site and um, tweak the search forms across the site so that instead of trying to search the WordPress database, it will search the Algolia index, which gives our users a faster search um, experience and um, a higher quality search experience. So I'm just gonna go through some things that uh, we've identified high priority or having a lot of use and that needs out of the box support, ideally to make the experience as in line with WordPress as possible. Even platform seven is it's amazing, but because it's very popular, <laughs> um, it just has a, a lot of users. Like, yeah. So, but um. Not my favorite plugin, uh, form plugin, but we do support it. And so anyone on Stratic who has contact form seven, they don't have to do anything to their form. They don't have to replace it with form endpoints or replace their forms. The form will work as expected um, on the static end. Um, 
we it's not magic, <laughs> although it is kind of magical. <laughs> The, the way we implement dynamic-ish functionality is by utilizing microservices, um, which Daniel Tacky mentioned. Uh, so we use it within our own platform in order to support dynamic functionality without having to depend fully on um, dynamic servers. Uh, Gravity Forms. Um, we used Gravity Forms for every website in my agency. It's a great plugin. Got a lot of options. It's very robust, and uh, we've seen that a lot of our customers use Gravity Forms, um, particularly like mid-level types of business generating leads from their websites. It's a it's a good plugin. So we rolled out support for basically all of almost all the functionality forms, so our users don't have to define anything. Search I mentioned, Algolia, infinite scrolling. Um, you can also see in the static tools directory, infinite scrolling that works well on static. Um, scheduled posts, which is important. Um, it's sad to lose the ability to schedule posts. Um, a lot of organizations depend on it. You know, their team will create posts and need them to not be published right now. And so with uh, we, we support that so that they can use scheduled posts and our system will detect that. And, Publish the post to static at the a lot of around a lot of time. Um, AMP so AMP can be challenging to support. Uh, it's it's not like out of the box kind of static, statically supported functionality. If you're using a WordPress plugin for that, so we recently rolled out support for that out of the box. Um, redirections plugins. Uh, my background, aside from being in WordPress, is also in SEO. So when we started out building this product, it was very important to me that we didn't leave any SEO benefits behind. That anything related to important SEO functionality um, and even less important SEO functionality came through uh, on the static website. So uh, we support the redir redirections plugin. Three on redirects are really, really important. Um, and I'm a big fan of Yoast SEO plugin. And um, so we support everything there, um, including taking over their sitemap. By the way, it's exciting that WordPress will have its own native sitemap. So of course, we'll support that as well. But that's, that's great news. Um, it's about time. <laughs> I feel like it's also been discussed for a long time. Uh, but we also support Yoast redirection. Um, WPML also heavily used, very cumbersome plugin. So not so easy to support out of the box with, with the standard static site generator. So we support that and Polylang. Um, so so basically, today, today's conference, I don't know what time it is for you, for me, it's almost six. <laughs> Um, but uh, it's really interesting because um, pretty much all the topics are about modern uses of WordPress. And when I say modern, I mean creative and innovative ways to um, bring WordPress into this, this trend of, of client-side, static, headless. And uh, it's really interesting and exciting to see the different solutions that are being um, developed by our community for this. And it is possible. Uh, I think it's a matter of educated education. Uh, all of us kind of learning to um, see WordPress in a different light and also uh, plan WordPress in, in a kind of different way. Like I said, it doesn't demand too much effort. But um, by keeping what static means in mind when you're developing a new site or managing existing site even, it give, opens up your options. It means that a static ready WordPress site can be hosted anywhere. Um, and it can also be hosted on a static publishing platform. And that I think is, uh, it's an important option to have. And even if you know you build a static ready site and you put it on standard conventional hosting, you may at some point down the line feel like it's the right thing to do to run the site as a static site. It could be that the site's traffic grows and 
um, you're finding it difficult to keep the site fast and alive. Uh, you know, it needs more services, needs more resources all the time. It's kind of a never ending chase after that. Or, you know, security is important to you and you don't want to have to like feel this tremendous pressure every time a plugin needs an update um, to do it right now. So you don't leave a window of opportunity for the hackers who will know about this vulnerability and be searching out sites like yours. Um, the, you know, uh, so, and of course, speed is also a big uh, benefit, particularly for sites that were built um, without speed in mind. Sometimes just publishing a site is static, you can see tremendous speed improvements without changing line of code. Uh, and I know from my agency days and from speaking to agency owners and developers today, whenever they have to tackle a site and reduce the, the page load speed, in some, in many cases, it's kind of like just bang your head against the wall and it can be very challenging. So having this as an option, um, I think is beneficial, whether you're in a company or you're building sites for your own customers. Um, and it helps us all kind of bring the WordPress industry into a more modern era of web development without us having to scratch everything and start anew. We can use WordPress um, and enjoy all of the benefits that it offers while also enjoying all the benefits of a more modern web. So that's my talk. I ended faster than I expected, um, but also this started later. So, and also I, I still hear myself um, as an echo, which is annoying. <laughs> um, so, I would love if you ask questions and we can have a Q&A now. It's my favorite part of giving talks. So please don't be shy. Ask anything, um, you know, with really anything. I would, I would love to have a conversation. So folks, we do have our chat available here and the ask question features. If you have any questions for Miriam here, we still have a little bit of time. Uh, so please go ahead and we'll give you a chance to submit any of those. Okay, so should we say goodbye to most page builders? Um, no, actually. Um, so the advantage of a statically generated site, even with a page builder is that Sometimes page builders, or often page builders, um, increase page load. They can be kind of heavy. But when you take that page builder generated site and then you generate a static version of the site, then that can be much faster. So you can still build with the page builder, but then get the static output, which is faster. So um, I don't think so. I think we can uh, still enjoy page builders. And of course, Gutenberg uh, will continue to develop and hopefully become more and more useful. And, and that's a core part of WordPress. Um, yeah, there's and, a question here that says, how well do Gutenberg blocks translate to static sites? Uh, most Gutenberg blocks translate into static site well. If there's a Gutenberg block that's using some kind of very tight um database integration then that would be more challenging um it depends what it is but basically the rule of thumb is if something whether it's a page builder or a gutenberg block helps you generate content um then it will work fine on a static generated site um do you need two hosts one for wp admin functionality one for hosting a static file uh, it depends who you use. So if you use like a plugin like WP2 Static, then you you can either kind of host everything on one server, but then if you're hosting the static files on the same server as the main site, then even the static files could suffer from page load issues. So then you would need two hosts. But when you use a platform like Stratic, it's all in one. The WordPress site um, is hosted on Stratic and it's in a container a dedicated container that spins down when you're not using it and spins up when you request it. Um, and then uh, all you do is click a button and it generates a static version of the site and serves it up through a CDN. Uh, the advantage of serving a statically generated WordPress site through a CDN 
is that every single page also gets served up through CDN as opposed to in your standard WordPress um, structure where basically the images and any other static files like CSS and JavaScript can get served up through CDN, but the actual pages don't exist because they're generated on the fly. So uh, site, every page is its own file and can be served up through CDN for another speed benefit. Um, do you plan to add Ajax support for filtering plugins? Uh, so if you go to our site and you go to the static tools directory, you'll see that it has a filter. So um, some, some filtering plugins can work. Uh, it depends what, but if you have something in mind specifically, we'd be happy to take a look at it. Uh, but we do have sites running with like um, filtering functionality, including our own. So that, that seems to work. Um, considering the cost of microservices and trade offs with the cost of plugins that might otherwise be used, plus hosting, blah, 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 which you think ends up being more expensive in general. Um, it really depends on how you uh, set it up. So, so, with regards to microservices, the cost only happens if a microservice is, being, is under a high amount of demand. So, let's take Lambda functions and let's take the example of our forms, right, uh, that we support. So. The forms aren't being submitted like all the time. A form submission is not like happening every minute or every second, unless maybe it's being hammered by spam bots or something, which we obviously try to avoid or prevent. Um, so that's not a high cost. Um, if you are building out like a Jamstack site and you try to replace everything with microservices, then you end up type of fun of comedy. I gave a talk at WordCamp Europe um, and I talk about that, how in some ways uh, the whole Jamstack trend has created its own kind of complexity, starts off simple and gets complex. But like in this scenario where you have a content site that's powered by WordPress and you generate it as a static site, then it's, uh, it's not like super expensive. Um, if you are building out your own solution, then I don't know how much it will cost. Our costs are what they are. So we're more expensive than some, less expensive than others. It's, you know, pricing is a whole thing. Um, okay. The, uh, does it integrate with ACF plugin? Yes. It, um, advanced custom fields. Um, it's a fantastic plugin. And in most cases, advanced custom fields is generating content. So that's perfect. Um, Custom post fields, custom Gutenberg blocks. Yeah. Like Maybe the vast have... majority. You know, there's probably cases that not, but. We had another question here. How do static site um, load speeds compare to a regular WordPress site with caching or CDN or varnish? So there, we've seen uh, WordPress websites that that are like heavily cached and heavily optimized and run really quickly. Um, unfortunately, achieving that is really complicated. And also balancing that with the need for the, for it to, to not be over cached and not be under cached and still get the benefits of caching while also being able to update the site. And then also tying that into a CDN in an ideal fashion and invalidating the CDN upon publication, like that type of setup is pretty sophisticated and is out of the hands of a lot of people, but also there's a lot of organizations or marketing teams or web managers who aren't interested in trying to set that up for themselves. Um, so anything's possible. There's some really fancy WordPress configurations out there. Uh, it depends how much time you want to invest in it. You can, you doing, if you invest and you have the technical know-how to do that, then you can get um, pretty good speeds. And of course, it also depends on how the original site was coded. Was it coded in an optimized way, um, which often isn't the case. So with a solution like Stratic, you don't have to set up this whole workflow and maintain it yourself, which also is complicated. And it's also not dependent on how the site was built. So, um, you know, everything has its pros and cons. There was a follow uh, cache here. validation times up there, yeah. There is a question about light speed and object cache. Would that be a similar answer um, comparing those to static? Similar. 
yeah, uh, definitely, definitely similar. Um, it takes a certain level of know-how and technical abilities to set it up well. And again, it's like this delicate balance and then maintaining it um, and keeping your marketing team happy that they can still, you know, do what they want to do. Uh, again, it's anything is possible. There are companies that have like dedicated WordPress teams in house and they even like will allocate DevOps resources or things like that to their WordPress site. But we've met a lot of companies that are relatively big and they're not interested in doing that at all. They would rather pay for high quality, you know, a hosting solution that gives them all of that and, you know, we'll take care of it. Okay, I think we have time for one um, last quick question here. Um, someone had asked, the idea of going static from scratch sounds enticing. However, the idea of converting a semi-large WordPress site that's been around for 10 years terrifies me. Have you seen successful conversions of this type? Um, yes, we have, because we've done them. <laughs> um, it really depends on the state of the site, but actually converting it to static ready, um, this is one of those use cases where it actually might be the most worthwhile because these old sites that are full of who knows what's going on in the database, right? <laughs> you know, they've added and removed plugins, but left records in the database. Um, uh, it's just got tons of content and legacy content and, and just seriously, who knows what's going on and badly coded. Um, it might be worth making the effort to get it to static ready state because by publishing as a static, who cares what's in the database? <laughs> who cares about all that stuff? If it's doing a million PHP queries, it doesn't matter on static. Um, and it might be worth it. Sometimes these things can seem overwhelming and daunting, but when you actually look into it, there's not that much that needs to be done to make it static ready. It's, it's worth taking a look. Um, and we've seen successful conversions. All right, Miriam, want to give you a big thank you for coming out today, folks. Please go uh, check her out and her work over at Stratic. And uh, we thank you so much for speaking. And we'll go ahead and bring up the next speaker here in a moment. So everyone give a, a big thanks uh, to Miriam here for coming out today.